Um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, speaker that's um, the local member for Balmain, uh, Mr Jamie Parker. So please make him feel welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Thanks, Jefferson. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jamie Parker. I'm the member for Balmain. I'm absolutely delighted to be here to see so many of you join with us to talk about West Connex and tell the truth about West Connex. Before I start, I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present, and ask you to have a think about this quote, because today I'm starting my speech with a quote, and I want you to think about who may have said this quote, and what do you think it means? And this person said, quote, Members of Parliament should examine their conscience and consider how they would feel if their children or the children of loved ones were exposed to this level of fumes every day and they were part of a government that could have put in place measures to reduce the impact of the fumes. It's not too late, this person said. The government can still ensure that filtration is possible. The quote was so good, we blew up the PA. So I'll just talk you through this. It says members of parliament should examine their conscience and consider how they would feel if their children or their children of their loved ones were exposed to this level of fumes every day and they were part of a government that could have put in place measures to reduce the impact of the fumes. It's not too late, this person said. The government can still ensure that filtration is a possibility. World's best practice is to filter tunnel stacks. Why won't they, talking about the government, allow people to sleep at night knowing that their children aren't inhaling toxins that could jeopardise their health now or in the future. Now, who do you think said that? Gladys Berejiklian, and she was talking about Labor's unfiltered smokestacks, and here we are, nine years later, with neither Labor nor the Coalition committing to filter stacks. And that demonstrates the extent to which those that are backing West Connects the lobbyists in particular, people like Nick Greiner, who came up with the original proposal for West Connex, who's now an advisor to Transurban, are driving the agenda, the motorway agenda, here in New South Wales. And so the Premier asked people back in 2009, those MPs, to consider their conscience. And we're saying today, Gladys, where is your conscience? Where are your principles? And where is your commitment to the health of our community? I want to also take a moment to talk a little bit about Stage 3. As you know, Stage 1 and Stage 2 have been progressing and had approval. Stage 3 is the stage in this area connecting Haberfield to the interchange of Roselle and then around to St Peter's. And this project has not received approval. It's undergone an EIS and that EIS had over 13,000 objections from the local community. And what was the outcome? that the government put together, they said, well, actually, we're going to make it worse. They added additional impacts in our community, taking 2,500 square metres of this park for a retention basin, and also proposing to take the White Bay Power Station for a staging site for all their vehicles and all of their construction facilities. So they're making it even worse here in our local community when it comes to West Connex. And the reason why they're pushing so hard and they're so desperate is because West Connex is failing. As you know, they're trying to sell West Connex, the Sydney Motorway Corporation. They're trying to sell 51% of it to the private sector. But we know investors are very cautious. And why are they cautious? Because the Lane Cove Tunnel went into administration. Because the Clement in Queensland went into administration. Because the Cross City Tunnel here in Sydney went into administration. Because it's a highly risky investment. And so what is the government doing? To try to get the private sector to buy this project with all the toll revenues that they project. What they're doing is they're building more motorways. So now they're proposing to feed West Connex with the Western Harbour Tunnel, which is a project for the Warringah Highway under Waverton, under the harbour, under Louisa Road in Balmain and connecting to Eastwood. Uh, connecting to Roselle. They're also proposing the Beaches Link in the Beaches suburbs. They're proposing an F6. All of these projects they're proposing to invest our money into to feed the failing West Connex project. And to make it even worse, you might have seen that Fairfax revealed that the Cabinet 
directed transport for New South Wales with these three new projects, the Western Harbour Tunnel, the Beaches Link and the extension of the F6 to say, do not compare these projects to public transport. Do not compare these projects to public transport and see which would be the better alternative. You are prohibited from doing that. So that, even at the most basic financial level of accountability, is absolutely scandalous. Absolutely scandalous. So, so, that's right. He's saying anything built by the public belongs to the people of New South Wales, but they don't want the public to own it. They're selling it to the private sector, which will invest in the majority of the project. And so what I want to ask you to do today is one simple thing. I want to ask you to use the power that you have as people that are involved in banks, that are involved in super funds, to make sure that your money does not get invested into WestConnex. Because we've been forcing and pressing the government, and we've had some wins. People say to me, can we win this? It just seems so impossible. But I want you to remember that the original West Connex proposal had another tunnel. It had a tunnel from Haberfield, underneath all of Parramatta Road, and it was to emerge just near Sydney University, near City Road, uh, where Newtown is, and near the Footbridge Theatre at Sydney University. That was the original proposal for West Connex, and why Minister Duncan Gay said, Parramatta Road will be in Havana end quote, because of West Connex. But they have dumped that tollway now. We've had protest meetings in Glebe, we've had big rallies about that issue, and that part of this ridiculous motorway project has now been defeated. There is no tunnel now from Haberfield under Parramatta Road to destroy and load hundreds of thousands of cars into the city. So we can win, and we have won and we can oppose stage three. So I'm circulating a leaflet. You might see a letter where we're asking you, think about what super fund you have. You can sign that letter and we'll send it to the super fund for you and tell them, don't invest in West Connects because the Sydney Motorway Corporation and the government are going to your super funds right now. They're approaching your super funds and say, invest in this risky, destructive project. And you need to be telling your super funds, you don't want your money invested in this project, that you don't want your bank to support the Sydney Motorway Corporation purchase. Because this project, in the end, will lock our city into car dependency. It will fleece the motorists of Western Sydney. It will only encourage more vehicles, and it will lock up public money that should be invested in public transport. So make sure, write to your bank, write to your financial institution, write to your super fund and say, don't invest in West Connex. We need world-class public transport. Thank you so much for joining me here today. We're going to continue this campaign until we defeat this ridiculous proposal.